Hi, this is Joss Box Mom, and welcome to Treasures of the Savage Frontier. I've actually had this game already installed on the com computer, and I've reinstalled it so that I can hopefully regain control of the mouse cursor to switch between DOSBox and Cam Studio. But anyway, so we're doing the initial setup now, which is something that you'll usually see at the beginning of a DOSBox game. We're going to pick Sound Blaster since I know that DOSBox has very good support for Sound Blaster and you'll get really nice sound that way. And we're going to go with the VGA graphics. And neither mouse nor joystick. Just keyboard con controls. Which will work just fine. And that's the default path to our save directory, which should work as long as you've got both Gateway to the Savage Frontier and Treasure to the Savage Frontier set up in the same directory on your computer. Then you mounted that directory in DOSBox, of course. Yeah. I play. And then you can initialize the mouse or joystick from here, but if you're doing that within DOSBox, you're not going to be able to move the cursor outside DOSBox. Whether you've got the mouse initialized or not. Now since we have a party that went through Gateway to the Savage Frontier. We're going to load a save game from Gateway and we're going to choose Save Game A and notice it's telling us cannot use this, that, and the other thing so it's going to strip away some of our magical items. We'll still have quite a few left. We should have pretty much all our money but nothing's going to be equipped. So we're going to have to go through and equip each of the characters. And we're going to do that right now. The party's in the same order that it was at the end of the previous game. I might possibly want to change that around. And I'm going to give this sword, uh, say to our straight fighter here. And then we'll have him. That should do. And notice with our Paladin, Lay works the same way as Heal did in Gateway to the Savage Frontier. Basically it allows her to heal two points of damage for each level of experience that she has. And looks like she's going to need some non-magical arrows. And 
then here's our cleric. And she still has her necklace of missiles. And you'll notice both of our mages have some magic scrolls that they picked up toward the end of the previous game that they never bothered to get identified. And yes, she does have leather armor, but since she also has braces of armor class 4, those are actually going to give her a better armor class than the armor will give her. Unfortunately, she's not able to use those nice magical longbows because apparently that's not allowed for thieves, which stinks. And he's got his ring of protection and his dagger. Okay, that should be everything. We're going to have some magic gear that we can sell off, probably. And we'll save our current game and begin adventure. <coughs> and here's our copy protection question. Pretty similar to Gateway to the Savage Frontier, except that instead of looking up a word on a certain line on a certain page, you're looking up a word after a certain heading on a certain page. So here we want page 7 and the eighth word after the heading character classes should be must. It must be must. And here's our intro. Late summer in the Valley of Desaron is a time of subtle beauties and quiet thoughts. On a hilltop above Yartar, your party spends a lazy afternoon of food and friendship, recalling your great triumph at Escor. No, it must be a dream. The green hillside has become a cold stone floor. Dark ceilings have blotted out the bright blue sky. Worst of all, the sweet songs of the birds have become the strident clank of armor. You recognize the familiar face of your old friend Amanita's. Oh, Dear, he says, one, two, three. <gasps> they all made it. I was afraid I'd left out a word or two. Once while fighting all bears, I summoned two white rabbits, three vials of sensuous silvery moon perfume, and a stuffed fish and a plaque inscribed to old Boggy from the boys. Amidius collects himself and explains to your party where you are and how you came to be here. You record his words as the introduction to your journal which we have right in front of us. Amanita embraced each member of the party, repeating how glad he was that we'd arrived safely. Then we sat down together on the cold stone floor, and he explained what had just occurred. Dear friends, he told us, I'm truly sorry for having pulled you away from your well-deserved rest at Yartar. It was my hope that your great victory at Escor would make the savage frontier safe from its enemies and allow you to resume normal lives. As normal, I suppose, as life can be when everywhere you go, people rush up to shake the hands of the heroes of Escor. Sadly, recent events have made this return to a peaceful life impossible. You're in Lork, far to the south and east of where you began this day in Yartar. We sit now in the ancient stronghold, that same stronghold where you had met with the besieged dwarves as you sought the final statuettes on your last adventure. Just weeks ago, the Zentarum legions and their allies were decimated by the monsters you summoned to the plaza of the ancient temple of Edaskor. The surviving orcs fled back to their mountain kingdoms, and the trolls limped back to the moors. The shattered forces of the Zentarum themselves retreated south, following the path that leads around the great desert through Lork, the one city they still controlled. The first bloodied fighters staggered into Lork last week and collapsed in the street, babbling about the hordes of monsters who had defeated them. Word quickly spread among the dwarves that you had destroyed the Zenil armies and that more survivors would be coming, returning soon. The dwarves realized that this was their one chance to revolt, to rise up and throw off the Zentarum invaders. Weapons were distributed, old plans reviewed, 
and the first attacks were launched that very night. But Lord Gildar, the Zentarum impostor who murdered the last dwarven king of Lork, is no fool. He had held <coughs> back a large force of fighters and loyal monsters, forces he was supposed to have sent on to Ascor. They know that if they're pushed from Lork, there's nowhere else to go, and Zen'll keep is very far away. They've fought the dwarves bravely at every turn, and both sides have taken terrible losses as they struggle to control the city. Milzor, the dwarven leader, sent a messenger to me at Sucumber seeking help. I arrived this morning and immediately realized that only you, the heroes of Ascor, could save the city and its brave dwarven rebels. I cast the spell that brought you to this fortress, and I pray that your skills and wisdom will prevail over the evil forces that seek to enslave these noble dwarves. If you can free the city, please come to visit me at Sucumber as soon as possible. I must return there now, for already I am receiving troubling reports about strange new events in Savage Frontier. Your help may be needed elsewhere, too, and soon. May Helm guide you safely through the challenges that lie ahead. Amanitas bids you goodbye and departs. Milzor, the dwarven leader, next salutes the party. Honored heroes of Ascor, thank you for coming to our aid. We will not stop the rebellion until we throw off the greedy Zentorum who stole our city and killed our king. He rushes from the room. The party is left alone in the ancient fortress. So I believe if we take a look at the map, this should be about the same part of the old castle where we met some friendly dwarves the last time. So if you remember my walkthrough of Gateway to the Savage Frontier, this is a repeat of that map. Yeah. You know, actually since I had reinstalled the game from scratch, I could have loaded a pre-generated party from save game A in Treasures. And those that party would have had armor already equipped, spells already memorized. However, the party I transferred over is probably going to have slightly better equipment and more experience than any pre-generated party would have or a party rolled up from scratch. So we need to save the game and memorize spells. Now our ranger and our paladin aren't able to memorize any spells yet and of course our straight fighter doesn't know any spells. So that brings us to our cleric. Notice none of the spells that were memorized at the end of the previous game are memorized at this point, so we have to memorize things from scratch. We're going to have the cleric take bless, detect magic, and a few cure light wounds. Then perhaps find traps and a couple each of hold person, silence 15 foot radius, and then prayer, dispel magic, and remove curse, which I think are the most useful of the third level clerical spells. And we're going to keep those. Then we'll have this mage who, since she's multi-class, probably isn't, isn't as experienced as the other guy. Memorize Charm Person and some other spells, and we'll finish memorizing spells off camera and come back afterwards. See you then.